Hey everybody, I'm Chris. Welcome to Lore Spire. I'm excited to be bringing you our very first character build today for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We'll start with the backstory, then move on to character creation and leveling, and finish with building out the mythic path. Timestamps are in the description below if you want to skip ahead, and if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor before we get started, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It would help me out a lot, and I'd really appreciate it. Our character, Nima, is an Arcanist with the Phantasmal Mage archetype and the Trickster Mythic Path. This character is best suited for players looking for an experience that is a bit more lighthearted, weird, and even a little wacky. Now for the story of Nima the Gnome. Nima was born in the city of Brasselwark on the 5th of Lamashan, a date that is a prankster's holiday for gnome kind known as Jester Cap. On this particular jester cap, a group of young gnomes decided it would be a hilarious prank to sneak into the local birthing house and switch around all the babies so that no one knew who belonged to whom. Fortunately, they were caught in the act so they could be made to switch all the children back to their rightful parents. Unfortunately, they had done such a great job of switching this child with that over and over that even they couldn't remember which child belonged to which parents. Among other races, this would have caused all kinds of chaos, and the pranksters would have been severely punished. However, gnomes being gnomes, the affected parents actually congratulated the pranksters for finding such an original way to celebrate Jester Cap, and decided that they'd just choose who took which child at random. So all of the parents drew different lengths of straw, and chose the children according to which lengths they had drawn. Everybody involved in the event was terribly excited about it, and by the next day it was the talk of Brasselwark, with the gnomes of the city finding the story to be an epic that would surely become legend, and the other races simply adding the story to a long list of reasons that gnomes were surely crazy. And that's how Nima came to be raised by two gnomes who may or may not have been her parents. Nima smiled as she recalled the story. It always amused her. Then she came back to herself and scanned the mid-afternoon crowd moving through the streets. This part of Brasselwark was made up of mostly humans going about whatever business they had for the day. Nima was hoping to find something interesting on this side of town, but it seemed her hopes would not come true. She should have known better. Humans did do a great many interesting things, but always seemed to do them in the most boring, predictable ways possible. It's why she rarely... Wait, what's that? Something beautiful had caught Nima's eye. A brightly polished silver hairpin with tiny rubies and sapphires and other stones Nima could not name, all glistening brightly in the afternoon sun. It would be wonderful to have, she thought. It seemed her feet must agree as they were already rapidly carrying her towards the woman. But how would she get it? Nima was accustomed to picking pockets, but those were much easier to reach than the top of a human head. Just then, the woman stopped at a fruit stand with a makeshift cover over the top. What luck! Nima was now certain some god somewhere, probably Desna, must want to see this fine piece of jewelry in her hair. If she hurried, she could make it atop the cover and snatch the hairpin without notice. Moving quickly, Nima scrambled up some barrels behind the stand and was on top of the cover in no time. It wasn't particularly sturdy, but she didn't have time to worry about that. Quickly, she cast a vanish spell on herself and moved over to the edge where she could see the hairpin just a foot or so away. Stretching, Nima reached for her prize. Just as her fingers gripped it, she began to fall. Stretched body, light as it was, still had shifted the center of gravity of the covering and caused it to collapse. Nima had landed solidly on the paving stones and lost her breath. Get up, she screamed inside of her head. You should be escaping! But her body only gasped for air. By the time she caught her breath, strong hands gripped her. She squirmed and wiggled but couldn't break free. A small crowd had gathered and they didn't seem to be very happy with Nima. She could hear them calling her a thief, some saying she should be locked up, others calling for her to be flogged. Either experience might be interesting, Nima thought, but she was sure that neither would be fun. It was going to take quite a performance to get out of this one. A guard appeared, pushing through the crowd to see what had happened. The vendor furiously explained that this gnome had damaged his stand and destroyed his produce. Several people in the crowd let out shouts, supporting his claim. But thanks to her vanish spell, Nima knew no one could have actually seen her do anything wrong. So she explained, I was just walking up here to buy some fruit and this cover collapsed on top of me. 
I could have been killed! I should press charges and have this man locked away. But thanks to Desna, I wasn't injured, so I guess I'll let it go this time. Then she turned, pointing a finger at the fruit stand owner. You had better do a better job of setting up your stand next time. The crowd had quieted. None had actually seen her do anything illegal, and her story was told quite convincingly. Excitedly, Nima thought, it's working, I'm getting away with it. And she was right. The crowd was beginning to disperse until... Suddenly a voice yelled out, Wait! Look in her hand! She must have stole that! Nima hadn't even realized she still held the hairpin. Her heart sank. She wasn't going to get away with it after all. As soon as this lady told the guard it was her hairpin, Nima would be clapped in irons for sure. And the lady did tell the guard that the hairpin was hers. But then, to Nima's surprise, added that it had simply fallen from her hair, and she was quite sure this gnome was only trying to return it to her. As she said this, she gave Nima a knowing look and smiled as she reached to take the item back. Without a care, Nima let her have it. This woman had just become so much more interesting to Nima than any piece of jewelry could ever be. Why would this noble looking woman, with all of her rich clothing and jewelry, not only lie to the guard for Nima, but also make sure that Nima knew that the woman herself knew that it was a lie. With that, the guard let Nima go and told everyone to be on about their business. And Nima just stood there watching the curious woman walk away. She had never met an interesting human before and might never meet one again. She couldn't let this opportunity pass her by. So Nima followed the woman all the way to her home. Nima gave the woman a moment to settle inside, then walked up to the house to knock on the front door, but stopped. Somehow it felt wrong. She wanted this to be an honest meeting, so she decided to sneak through the back window. What could be more honest than that? The back window was surprisingly accessible, and in a matter of seconds, Nima was inside. As soon as she looked up, she was surprised to see the woman just sitting there, smiling at her. She laughed and gave a light clap, then introduced herself as Lyra and explained that she had doubted very much that Nima would use the door and then gave further explanation as to why she had doubted it. You see, Lyra was an arcanist, which is, as she put it, like a wizard, only better. She also explained that she had worked with many gnomes throughout her life and found that few preferred using a door when first meeting her, and fewer still could resist an intriguing lie about something they themselves had done. Lyra would have been truly surprised if Nima had not followed her home and snuck in through her back window. The two talked for a long while, with Nima explaining about being drawn to the hairpin and all that had happened back at the fruit stand. She already knew why the woman had lied for her, so the next most obvious question was why had she wanted to meet Nima? Lyra told Nima that she herself was intrigued by an invisible gnome attempting to pilfer her hairpin. Not the pilfering part, as that is commonplace with gnomes, and even being invisible isn't all that uncommon for a gnome. But Lyra had known many gnome wizards, sorcerers, and even a druid, and she was certain by Nima's youth and the way she carried herself that she had no magical background, other than being a gnome, of course. So how had such a young, seemingly poor gnome with no magical training turned herself invisible? Nima answered simply that she had learned from watching a street magician do it. The answer fascinated Lyra. Nima must have some amazing natural talent for that to be true. Lyra decided she couldn't let that talent go to waste and offered to train Nima to be an arcanist. Nima had never been so excited. She accepted with a whirlwind of words spoken so quickly Lyra could hardly understand them. The two agreed to meet back at Lyra's home in two days. Then they would be leaving for Numeria where Lyra had a years-long research project planned. Nima left, her head swimming with ideas of what an amazing adventure this would be. The next day, she said goodbye to her parents, who were almost as joyfully energetic about the whole thing as Nima was, and then she left home with what little she had. There was still an entire day to wait, but she decided wandering the city and sleeping the night in an alley would be good training for the adventure she was about to go on, and that's exactly what she did. The next day, Lyra and Nima set forth on their journey to Numeria, which as it turned out, wasn't much of an adventure after all. The trip was uneventful, with most of their time spent in a carriage with guards who Lyra had hired, escorting them the entire way. 
Upon realizing this would be the case, Nima was disappointed. She had so hoped to be attacked by a troll, or at least to have to fight off some bandits. Fortunately, Nima was a gnome, and her disappointment was quickly forgotten once she remembered how interesting Lyra was. The two women shared stories and ideas and got along quite well. Nima thought that while Lyra might be a human, she must have the soul of a gnome. When they finally reached their destination in Numeria, Lyra gave Nima trunks full of books to study and a list of the order in which to study them. Lyra would do her research by day and quiz Nima by night. The gnome would often give peculiar answers, but upon further questioning, Lyra always found these answers to be technically correct. It seemed Nima's mind just worked a little more abstractly than Lyra was used to. For years this went on, with Nima eventually graduating past book learning and into practical application. Nima was good at casting spells, but truly excelled in learning the shortcuts to casting that were every arcanist's advantage. As is befitting a gnome, Nima was particularly adept with illusion magic and commonly found uncommon ways in which to make illusion magic work. Then suddenly, one day Lyra announced to Nima that she had done it. She was a full-fledged arcanist. She still had much to learn, of course, but at this point Lyra felt only going out and doing it was going to make Nima any better at it. This made total sense to Nima, as every known knows that experience is always the best teacher. Now Nima needed only to decide where to go and what to do. What was the most interesting thing she could think of? In her studies she had read of demons who flayed people alive with their fingernails, who turned people inside out with their magic and even some who could make blood fall like rain from the sky. She wanted to see these wondrous things for herself. Maybe she could even learn some of these tricks like she learned to vanish from that street magician so long ago. There was only one way to find out, and as luck would have it, the Fifth Crusade was currently battling an army of demons in Mendev. Only a hop, skip, and a jump from Numeria where she was now. Everything was really falling into place for Nima. She must truly be blessed! Could there be a more interesting and exciting life than that of an arcanist battling demon hordes? Nima thought not. And that's our backstory for Nima. I was really trying to portray her as an eccentric, lighthearted gnome that doesn't care much for rules or ideas of right and wrong or good and evil. Mainly she lives in the moment and just wants what she finds most exciting and interesting in life. In my mind, she definitely tends more towards valuing life, but isn't opposed to doing or allowing evil if she thinks that the act and or result might be exciting or interesting enough. Did you like Nima's story or hate it? Or did you think it was just like, me? whatever? Let us know in the comments below, and if you could give a reason, that would be awesome. Now before we start building the character, I need to go through some disclaimers. First off, Wrath of the Righteous is still in beta, so some of these choices may change by the time the game releases. I don't actually expect this to happen, but it's possible. Second, I'm assuming that you'll have other characters in your party taking care of buffs. So when we're picking spells, if your party is lacking an important buff, it might be a good idea to get that in place of the spells I'm taking. Also, I'm assuming you are playing on core difficulty or lower. I find core difficulty provides a significant challenge without making the game feel like a chore. If you are playing on hard or unfair, I suggest you give up the utility feats and abilities that I take, and instead take feats and abilities that maximize your damage and the bonuses to your saving throws. Finally, this class can use its arcane points to empower its illusion spells with metamagic, and the trickster mythic path gives an ability that allows infinite uses of wands. So we'll be using our arcane points and wands instead of feats to give our spells metamagic. Now that that's out of the way, let's build Nima. Choose create custom character here of course. Here you can choose whichever portrait you like. My portrait is a kingmaker portrait that's been modded. You can download portrait mods from Nexus mods and just so you know the kingmaker portrait mods actually work for Wrath of the Righteous. You may have to install them manually though, instead of using a mod installer. Next, choose Arcanist with the Phantasmal Mage archetype. Here, Nima is a female gnome. 
And our background is going to be Street Urchin Pickpocket. Nima's starting ability points will be 5 in Strength, 10 in Dexterity, 14 in Constitution, 18 in Intelligence, 10 in Wisdom, and 18 in Charisma. For our starting skills, we're going to take Stealth, Knowledge Arcana, World, and Persuasion. Stealth is mainly in case you run into a fight you're having trouble with early on. It'll allow you to sneak up and start off the fight with a color spray. Now take the Spell Focus Illusion feat. For the Arcanist exploit, take Potent Magic. It doubles the bonuses you can give your spells with your Arcane Reservoir, and it's definitely the best exploit in my opinion. Our first spells will be Burning Hands, Color Spray, Grease, Mage Armor, Magic Missile, Summon Monster 1, and Vanish. Nima isn't particularly religious, but she does prefer Desna on the rare occasion she offers up a prayer. Nima's alignment is Chaotic Neutral. Now for our appearance, go ahead and pick whatever you like. For me personally, I prefer the first face with a pale skin tone. The first hairstyle, this color of pink for the hair, and for the clothing, the primary I have is this light colored pink, and the secondary is this color of aqua. I prefer the carefree voice for Nema, I think it suits her best. And then here, her name is of course Nema, and she's born on the 5th of Lamashan. And that'll do it for character creation. Now, as we're leveling Nima, all of our levels will go into Phantasmal Mage. At level 2, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, Perception, Persuasion, and use Magic Device. For spells, get Ear Piercing Scream and Shield. At level 3, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana and one into Persuasion, and two skill points into Knowledge World. Then take the Persuasive Feat and the Swift Consume Exploit. Now with this exploit, you can now consume a spell to replenish Arcane Points, then use those Arcane Points to empower your next spell, and then cast that spell all on the same turn. It can be a really powerful combo. Anyway, moving on to spells, we're going to pick up Enlarge Person and Expeditious Retreat. At level 4, we'll put our ability point into Intelligence. Our skill points will go one each into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, and Persuasion. And our spells for this level are Blur and Invisibility. At level 5, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, Persuasion, and use Magic Device. Take the Greater Spell Focus Illusion feat and choose Invisibility and Create Pit for your spells. Now here, you notice we get our first arcane metamagic, which lets us use arcane points to empower our illusion spells with extended reach or selective metamagics. Moving on to level 6. Put one skill point into knowledge arcana, world, perception, and persuasion. Take the displacement and stinking cloud spells, and be sure to take resist poison communal with another character to combo with stinking cloud. Alright, at level 7, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, Persuasion, and use Magic Device. Then select the Spell Penetration feat and the Flame Arc Exploit. For spells, take Fireball and Spiked Pit. At level 8, put the Ability Point into Intelligence. And we get some extra skill points this level. So put one into Knowledge Arcana, World, and Persuasion. Then put 3 into Use Magic Device, and 2 into Perception. After that, take the Phantasmal Killer and Rainbow Pattern spells. At level 9, put 1 skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Now take the Greater Spell Penetration feat, the Arcane Barrier Exploit, and the Greater Invisibility and Acid Pit spells. At level 10, we'll put one skill point each into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, and Persuasion. 
Then take the Phantasmal Web and Shadow Evocation spells. At level 11, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Now take the Lightning Reflexes feat, and for spells pick up Hungry Pit and Cloud Kill. Here we receive our next Arcane Metamagic which allows us to use Arcane Points to empower Illusion spells with the Persistent or Empowered Metamagic feats. At level 12, put your Ability Point into Intelligence, and Skill Points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then copy Chains of Light and Phantasmal Putrefaction into your spellbooks and move on to level 13. Here we'll be putting our skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then take the Great Fortitude feat, the Arcanist Exploit Hellfire Ray, and for spells get Chain Lightning and Summon Monster 6. At level 14, put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, and Persuasion. Then take the Invisibility Mass and Shadow Conjuration Greater Spells. At level 15, put your skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then take the Improved Lightning Reflexes feat, the Spell Resistance Exploit, and the Caustic Explosion and Summon Greater Elemental Spells. At level 16, put your last meaningful ability point into Intelligence, then put one skill point into Knowledge Arcana, World, and Persuasion, then put five into Perception, and four into Use Magic Device. After that, pick up Shadow Evocation Greater and Rift of Ruin as your spells. At level 17, we'll put our skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then take the Iron Will feat, and get the Summon Monster 8 and Scintillating Pattern spells. Then notice here we get the last Arcane Metamagic, allowing us to use Arcane points to empower Illusion spells with the Maximize and Quicken Metamagic feats. At level 18, put your skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then grab the Shades and Weird Spells. At level 19, put your skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Then get the Improved Great Fortitude feat followed by the Greater Spell Resistance Arcanist Exploit, and the Tsunami and Summon Monster 9 spells. Finally, level 20, where we'll put our last ability point into Strength, and then we'll put our skill points into Knowledge Arcana, World, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Our final spells will be Fiery Body and Clashing Rocks, and we get Meta Magic Supremacy, which makes it so that empowering our illusion spells with Meta Magic costs one less arcane point. All right, and that's it for uh, all of our levels. Now we'll move on to the Trickster Mythic Path. If you're getting any uh, value out of this, please like and subscribe. Really helps us out. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, on to our Trickster Mythic Path. For our first mythic level, we have to choose Mythic Hero, and we'll take Bit of Fun as the first ascension, and Full Reservoir for the mythic ability. Our second mythic level goes to Mythic Hero, and here we're taking the expanded Arsenal Conjuration Mythic feat. You probably noticed that as we were leveling, most of the non-illusion spells we took were Conjuration spells, and this feat is the reason for that. It will give all of the bonuses from feats and mythic feats that are affecting our illusion spells to our conjuration spells. So our conjuration spells should now be as effective as our illusion spells. And here you'll notice that we get hard to kill, which doubles the number of negative hit points we have before we die. And also creative approach, giving us a plus three circumstance bonus to all skill checks. Now this video is already getting pretty long and we're going to pick up so many of these types of abilities and spells from the Trickster Mythic Path 
that from here on I will only be describing the effects of abilities. And now we can start down the path of a trickster. Our mythic ability will be powerful shadows giving our shadow spells a 20% boost. And our mythic trick will be knowledge arcana which gives an additional plus one to any magical equipment we identify. Take the color spray, vanish, and grease spells. And for anyone who isn't aware, your arcanist and trickster spell books are actually separate. So doubling up on these spells does allow you to cast them more times per day. At mythic rank four, take the spell focus illusion mythic feat. Now take the mythic trick Infuse Magic Device, which will make the abilities from your magic items a lot more powerful. And then your improved mythic trick will get Reuse Magic Device, which gives Nima infinite uses for any wand and she can equip any magical gear, even if she doesn't meet the requirements for it. If you haven't already started collecting metamagic wands to enhance your spells, you should start doing so now. For spells, get Feather Step, Blur, and Chameleon Stride. And look, now we have Beer Elementals and Fish Missiles for everybody. At the 5th Mythic rank, grab the Ascendant Summons Mythic ability to beef up your summons a bit. And then the Perception Mythic trick, which gives you the ability to see the invisible and to find items in unexpected places. Then for spells, take Expeditious Retreat, Mirror Image, Displacement, and Stinking Cloud. At Mythic Rank 6, we'll get the Spell Penetration Mythic Feat. And for the Mythic Trick, take Lore Nature, and then take it again for the Improved Mythic Trick. This will allow you to find potions, scrolls, magical items, and ingredients for an uncommon meal when you rest. Then for spells, grab Reduce Person, Invisibility, Blink, Phantasmal Killer, and Rainbow Pattern. For Mythic Rank 7, get the Archmage Armor Mythic Ability, the Knowledge World Mythic Trick, which is a little confusing, but it basically makes it a lot easier for your party to pass all checks that are not Knowledge World checks. Then take the Lore Nature Greater Mythic Trick, which ensures you always find rare magical artifacts and the ingredients to make an exquisite meal every time you rest. As spells, take Find Traps, Slow, Shadow Conjuration, Phantasmal Web, and Shadow Evocation. At Mythic Rank 8, Choose the School Mastery Illusion Mythic Feat, the Mobility Mythic Trick, and the Knowledge Arcana Improved Mythic Trick, which will add random minor effects to magical items you identify. For spells, take Eagle Splendor, Dominate Animal, Chameleon Stride Greater, Mind Fog, Cat's Grace Mass, and Phantasmal Putrefaction. At Mythic Rank 9, choose the Last Stand Mythic Ability, the Lore Religion Mythic Trick, and the Knowledge World Greater Mythic Trick, which doubles your chances to roll a 20 and eliminates your chances to roll a 1 anytime you roll a d20. Then take the Hold Person spell, Greater Invisibility, Feeble Mind, Eagle Splendor Mass, Invisibility Mass, and Shadow Conjuration Greater. Now for our final mythic rank, we'll choose the expanded arsenal enchantment mythic feat so we can actually make use of some of these enchantments that we've been picking up. Then we'll take the persuasion mythic trick and the knowledge world greater mythic trick. For our final spells, we'll take reduce person mass, dominate person, umbral strike, and insanity. And that wraps up our mythic path rankings. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the build, what other builds you would like to see, and what classes and mythic paths you are most looking forward to playing. Now I know this has been a pretty long video so please let me sincerely thank everybody who made it this far. This took a lot of time and work so thank you. Seriously, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because we're going to have a lot more backstories, builds, and guides for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous 
as well as other RPGs coming to you here at Lorespire. We'll see you next time.